Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Jesse Warden. Today we're going to answer an email from a viewer who asks all about API expectations. He's very overwhelmed, it sounds like, from the huge amount of API or application programming interface, right? Methods and properties that all these languages and libraries and frameworks expose. First question is, what are the expectations of learning a new API? Well, that depends on where you work and what level you're at. So for example, you're a junior developer, you're brought into a reasonably mid-sized company. You have about five developers. You have an architect in charge. They're probably going to have an existing code base and they're going to say, hey, you need to go fix a bug because that's the best way to learn a new code base is to fix bugs. And you're basically thrown into the fire. How they teach bartenders on the first night, go serve drinks, have fun. Great way to learn. And they already have an existing service at API. Maybe they wrote, probably. They're going to use a series of libraries, some of which they wrote, some of which they've adopted. And they're going to use those things in a certain way or a style on how they code. And you're going to have to figure that out. Those APIs, how they did things, that is your job as the junior developer is to learn, figure out how they code things and figure it out. The other way is if you're a senior developer and you got a freelance client, they're going to ask you. So either you know of a library, you've used project to project, you know the APIs for it, you got them memorized and you're utilizing those specific parts. Or if you were a, let's say, brought into a project, maybe you're mid, mid or senior level developer, there's an architect there and they know of the pieces that they want you to build, you probably only have to memorize the parts that they're going to specify for you. So for example, a lot of larger teams will have individuals designated for areas. They'll have somebody dealing with the build. They'll have somebody dealing with the view layer or the GUI, what you see. They'll have somebody dealing with the CSS and GUI to help out to handle a lot of the styling, make things look good, do a lot of production, production artwork, things like that. They'll usually have somebody dealing with the service layer. Their responsibility is to interface with the back end. Maybe they code the back end and they're working 50 50. And finally, you're going to have somebody dealing with both architecture and the controlling, assembling, putting everything together, right? When I click a button and it goes here, there's got to be somebody responsible for that. Those areas of delegation mean that you're only going to be utilizing APIs that are relevant to what you're working on. So for example, if you're just on the GUI, you're probably just going to do CSS and jQuery, dealing with just GUI stuff, no Ajax. So that's all you're going to remember. So again, the expectations of learning a new API, it depends on if, if I'm assuming if the API is new, it could be being developed as you go. So for example, even if you're a junior developer, you're working with server guys, they're kind of looking to you to say, what kind of calls do you need to the database? What data do you need? How do you need it? Are you going to make six calls? Would you like to make just one call and have the data in RAM to play with? What are these conversations that you're going to have? Some of that API you're going to help develop. So it just depends on the team you're working with, how accessible they are. Are they right next store in a new cube or are they over in India and in 20 different time zones? and you're in Australia, the expectations are really the size of your team, where you work and what your role is. To give you the last extreme is if you're one dude, one engineer in a design agency, and you're responsible for making a really high end website. The problem with those are short deadlines, low engineer count, probably just you, maybe you're on multiple projects and you've got to do everything, the front end, the back end, the build systems, everything. So a lot of those are not going to happen. You're not going to have unit tests. You're not going to have build systems. You're going to be really intimate with a lot of the more, GUI libraries, some of which you probably wrote yourself to do those particular projects, and the others you're going to delegate off to, right? DOM manipulation, you don't need to do that. But some of the more CSS stuff, you might want to do yourself to get better optimizations because the client wanted it to look that way, right? They don't really care about the library's limitations. Next question, does learning a new API get easier the more you're exposed to different ones? Absolutely. If you go to jQuery, take a look at the Ajax, right? If, for API documentation, they're going to have a set of classes or objects or classes. Almost every language stack framework server or client has this. They're going to have a set of libraries off to the left, usually that are grouped by what they do, right? The effects, the forms, this is web specific, right? But Ajax, of those, they're going to have the class or object that it's dealing with, the methods that it exposes. They're going to talk about the parameters that you can use, what types they expect, even in a typeless language like JavaScript, dynamic. The settings and all, if you're lucky, they'll even give you an example of how you use it. So you'll learn how to do that. Almost everything does that. Backbone, another perfect example. If I'm looking at the models and the events and how it works, if I go to model and I look at get, I can see what it does with an example, the set, the attributes, which ones are optional. Again, these brackets indicate optional with examples. You're going to see this on just about everything you do. Moment.js, a particular library for modifying dates in JavaScript. Again, very top. 
We have moment, which implies that it's a function call, right? Because of the parentheses. And it supports function chaining because the return value of the function is the moment instance, which we then immediately call format. So it must expose a format method. And here's an, some examples of the string formatting we can do. All date libraries in general support this kind of date formatting with these strings. Moments just decided to do it in two function calls. So you can see that you can change a, a date that's hardly unreadable to something like Friday. So again, all these APIs, yes, they're very commonality. You're going to see the patterns. You're going to see the commonalities, whether it's on a GUI side or a CSS abstraction layer framework or a service layer. You're going to see those patterns and recognize it. And maybe your thing is front end CSS frameworks. So you're going to be better or more inclined than your peers because that's your thing. That's what gets you excited. So you're going to recognize those patterns and recognize those libraries. And it's actually easier for you to learn those. If you think of the old analogy of Dungeons and Dragons, they used to have a mage that could either be a general practitioner of various schools of magic. So he could do transmutation where you change things. He could do invocation where you use energies. He could do divinations where you figure out, you know, ESP and looking at the future. He could do conjuration where you summon demons and other things to do attack the bad guys, or he could specialize in one. So if he was a transmuter specialization, it would be harder for him to learn these other ones. He's still a mage, so he can learn it where a warrior can't. So at least he has that. But when it comes to transmutation magic, he's really good at learning how to shape change and modify things. He's really, really good at that. Programming has the same thing. You could be a generalist and love to play with a variety of different libraries from CSS to runtime to networking to actual build systems or build systems are your thing. And that's what you're known for in the industry. And that's what you like. And it's easier for you to learn those. Doesn't matter though. Bottom line is, even if you know just a little bit about everything, it's very common in other languages and other stacks to have those things. So, learning a new API, they're always going to have some form of methods, some form of property, some some ways of getting events out of it. It has some form of state, some form of messaging system. If it's a framework, it's going to be based loosely on MVC. You're going to see those patterns. You're going to memorize these higher level programming concepts that have nothing really to do with the language. And then the things that do have to do with the language will be under that. You'll you're going to recognize that JavaScript has more methods and setters because it's hard to do getter to setters in JavaScript. So libraries are more apt because they're functional to offer methods on doing those types of things rather than properties. Third question, should maybe the way a person thinks about using a bunch of APIs is to have a bu bunch of references for each one? Absolutely. I have 50 tabs open all day with references to the documentation, so I don't have to remember it. Again, short-term memory, long-term memory. If you do something a bunch, just like in a computer, RAM, you're going to have all these things in RAM. As soon as you can turn your computer off, it's all gone, right? If you're going to work on a file for long term, maybe today, maybe for a couple weeks, you're going to save it to the hard drive. You're going to save that file and, and check it in source control. It's going to be around long time. Short term memory. If you meet a person every day and memorize their name, it's going to go from your short term memory to the long term memory because they, your body knows that you're going to interact with this person a lot and you need to immediately recognize their name. Right, and interact with them. So it's the same thing in programming. If you're dealing with CSS libraries day in and day out, your job at that particular company you're with is to do just view stuff. You're not doing networking, you're not doing build stuff. If you're just doing view stuff, you're gonna be totally memorizing all the CSS properties, all the CSS frameworks in like foundation or, or bootstrap. You're gonna know all the weird ways of dealing with DOM and jQuery. You're gonna memorize that. You can't help it because you use it every day, right? And the abstractions around that, you're gonna memorize that. When somebody says, go look at a networking code, you're like, I don't know how this works. I can't remember. And here's the other thing that, that's cool. If you don't do it for six months, let's say you go do something completely different. When you come back, you will forget, but you'll start seeing things that you recognize and it'll, all those connections get rebuilt in your brain. Obviously, the older it gets, the older you get, the harder it does to do that. But as long as you constantly challenge your brain and it's used to doing things out of its comfort zone, it's really easy for you to recall code that you've written six months ago with a couple you know, choice comments to help you remember why you did something crazy. So yes, it does get easier over time learning, whether it's, you know, front end, back end, Python, JavaScript, doesn't matter. They all have those high level commonalities in play. Okay. Matt's last question is the expectation that you have to memorize all of them. No, you do not have to memorize all the APIs, but you do, or I encourage you to go learn them. You should go explore other APIs, especially out of your comfort zone. And it, it, if you're still, you know, learning, you're still new at programming, you should definitely learn the things that you're excited about. Because if you're excited and passionate, as soon as you failed something, oh, that's too bad, I'll try again. Versus, I don't even like CSS, and now I, I can't get this style to work. This is dumb, right? You don't want to get frustrated. Frustrating, you know, and failure 
and constantly trying things and not having them work is part of programming. You need to, you know, build up a tough skin and say, oh, I failed, boo hoo, you know, cry me a river. You need to feel like that and get over it because it happens a lot. If, if this stuff was easy, we wouldn't exist. There would be no need for programmers. We would just be hobbyists. You know, kind of like musicians nowadays, we, they, they serve a need. People need music. But if computers write themselves, they wouldn't need us. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. There is no need for programmers once computers can write themselves. So I encourage you to go learn libraries and APIs that you don't know about, something you've never tried before. And it's definitely cool. If you get frustrated, go stick to something that you know you enjoy, right? Maybe it's front end frameworks, maybe it's build system, whatever your thing is, you need to find it. But what's gonna happen is whether you're on a small project or a big project, if you're on a big project with a big team, you're only gonna memorize the APIs that are relevant to your type of project. You're only gonna utilize the APIs that are relevant to what you do every day. Those are the things that are gonna retain in your long-term memory. So when you wake up the next day, you don't have to reread the docs, right? You can keep them open to refer to parameter you haven't quite you know, mastered, but yeah, you'll, you'll definitely memorize those. The other things on networking, you'll completely forget or you know, you used them for one day and they didn't go in your long term. Yeah, you're going to forget. That's why they have documentation. That's why Google and Stack Overflow exist is for you to refer to those things. Different versions of those libraries and languages, right? You know, how does Out Event Listener work in the browser? Cool. How does it work in IE versus every other browser? What? Right? So JavaScript and other languages have these quirks that make learning and memorizing things some hard. That's why documentation is out there. Okay? And you're going to find that your brain prioritizes what those things are. And lastly, if you are on a small team, maybe you're in an agency and you're actually the team and you're doing four projects at once, you're going to find that your brain optimizes what you memorize and what you don't. So for example, you'll tend to use a lot more libraries that do things for you and you'll only write gooey specific things yourself, right? You'll reinvent the wheel because the client wanted it to look just so. The design director said it needs to look exactly like the comp. I don't care if you have to rewrite all of jQuery, you make it happen, even if it takes you 60 hour weeks. Those kind of things, you know, you're not gonna memorize. You're only gonna memorize the API for dealing with CSS and, you know, OpenGL and that particular browser system. And that's it. You won't remember like, well, I don't know how Angular works. I just, you know, threw it in there because I was bored. <laughs> You're not going to know the underpinnings of it because you don't have time. Your brain is focused on just what matters right now. So it depends on the context. But regardless of project, regardless of size, regardless of industry, you do not need to memorize everything. If it's a really small library like Moments, for the most part, you're only going to use format with a couple date formats anyway. So. If you're not dealing with calendar days, do you really care about calendars? No, because you're not doing calendars in your app, right? Or maybe you are, in which case you're only using that. It just depends on the type of app you're using, but for the most part, you're not gonna have to memorize it. And if you did, that's why docs exist. So you can refer to them and we have tab browsing to keep all the docs open, okay? So Matt, I hope that makes you feel better to recognize that learning should be fun. These APIs, part of using them is actually reading the docs and how they work first, or looking into existing code bases and how others use them. Maybe that's not how you're supposed to use them, but you, you can learn that. And if you forget, it's okay because either it wasn't relevant because you're not using it every day. So your brain said, oh, I just made an optimization. I didn't put it long-term because it's never used anymore. Or maybe you do six months later, the synapses will regrow connections. So you can remember that part of the brain that it put in there. So at least you have a head start. Okay. So I hope that makes you feel better. You don't have to memorize all these APIs. Part of it's learning but you should explore new APIs. So again, my name is Jesse Warden. You got any questions, hit me up on email, on Google+, on Facebook, on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe. And I hope that makes you feel better, Matt. If you got any other questions, send them in. Happy holidays, happy new year. I know I'm gonna have an awesome one. I hope you all do too.